Hey everybody, Coach James with True Zone Coaching, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about a shoe that I purchased on the Adidas website about two weeks ago. This is the Adidas Terex Agravic Flow 2. I've taken this shoe on a couple of trail runs, and today I wanna to let you know about my experiences and whether I would pay full retail price or if the shoe is only worth the $42 that I paid for it. This shoe debuted in May 2023. The following month, Ruth Croft wore the shoe at the Western States 100, the oldest 100 mile trail race in the world. She won the female category and ran the third fastest female time ever in this shoe. So although the shoe is best suited for mountain running, I took the shoe on three separate trail runs on two different trails on different condition days. So I was able to get exposure to some climbing, some slippery descents, some mud, some low water crossings, and some speedy, sandy single track. So let's talk about the specs of this shoe. The shoe weighs about 320 grams or 11.29 ounces. It's displayed here on the toe of the shoe. The heel stack is 28 millimeters and the toe stack is 20 millimeters, making the drop eight millimeters. It's considered to be a neutral trail shoe and it's pretty stiff and stable on the trails. Let's talk about the upper of the shoe. The heel cup is stable and it comes up really high. If I wasn't wearing thicker crew socks, I could see where this may cause some irritation on my Achilles, but I tend to wear higher socks to avoid things like poison ivy and different critters that might be out on the trails. The mesh is a two layer mesh and it's a breathable mesh on most of the shoe up here, but it's also got a structured cover here, which is awesome because it helps to keep pokey things from getting at my feet. It goes all the way around on both sides here. Let's talk about the tongue and the laces. This is a non-gusseted tongue, meaning it is only connected down at the bottom of the laces. It kind of free flows here throughout the shoe. That bothers some runners, but it doesn't bother me at all. I actually like it because it lets me place the tongue exactly where I want it before I lace up. Let's talk about the laces. These are long, like really long, which is helpful because I found the shoe slipping a little bit on my heel when I was cutting corners and tight turns. And so the next run that I do, I'm gonna change the lacing structure so I get a bit more of a heel lock. And so I'll need to eat up some more of this lace. So the shoe features, like many Adidas shoes, the Light Strike EVA foam. This foam is pretty stiff and it made for a stiff ride, um, but because it's such a neutral shoe, it gave me the balance of cushion and the ability to feel the earth the way that I want to if I'm gonna try to move quickly on the course. This part here is called the Pro Moderator and it also adds a bunch of stability. So regardless if I was running you know, on a sandy single track, or if I was doing some switchback movements, um, I found myself very steady in the shoe and still had some cushioning to absorb some of the climbing or the rocks that I was encountering on the trails. All right, now let's talk about probably my favorite part of the shoe, the outsole. So like most Adidas shoes, they use a continental rubber, um, very, very durable, great in wet conditions. But what was most impressive to me are these lugs. And so the lug depth is four millimeters, so they're pretty hefty. And I love the layout here. Um, it's pretty common to have some forward facing and backward facing, but I think the width that's between the lugs really did an exceptional job of allowing me to grab onto the earth, grab onto rocks, make it through mud um, without really having to alter my stride or my gait um, at all um, during the runs. Let's talk about the fit of the shoe. So I wear a US size 11, and I got this shoe in a US size 11. There was still plenty of room in the toe box for my toes. Um, I could see where, kind of where the toe knuckles sit, kind of in this area, where if you've got a bit of a wider foot, it might be a little tight for you. So you'd want to explore the wider version of the shoe. But other than that, this shoe is true to size. All right, it's verdict time. Three words that I would use to describe this shoe are reinforced 
stiff and connected. And I loved every minute of every mile that I ran in this shoe. I liked the sandy single track. I really was able to pick up speed and grip. Um, it didn't bother me that the shoe was 11 ounces. I liked the ability when I was climbing, the lugs ability to grip onto the rocks or the logs that I was climbing over. Um, I loved that when I got into some water that was pretty shallow, um, nothing seeped into the shoe um, and it felt breathable on the hot days that I ran, um, which I really appreciated because my feet generally get pretty hot. I think what was most important to me was the stability of the ride when I was moving quickly um, and on the switchbacks. Um, I haven't ran in a shoe um, that was as neutral as this before. Most of the shoes that I'm running in were either Max Cushion or Speed Trail shoes. And in the Max Cushion shoes, I'd roll my ankles three or four times on every run because I just couldn't feel the earth underneath me. And so having this neutral shoe really helped and I didn't find myself rolling my ankles. So some of those other shoes, I'm not gonna name names that I ran in that gave me those ankle challenges are this guy and this guy. And then there are two shoes that I've been running in that are fairly similar to the feel of the Flow 2. The first is the Nike Terra Kiger. This is the 7. And so I've put some miles on this shoe. But um, like the Flow 2, it really let me feel the earth and was exceptional on single sandy track where I wanted to pick up speed. Um, the thing I didn't like about this shoe was the cushioning. It just didn't give me the support that I need when I'm running on a trail. And then I've got the Saucony Peregrine. This is the 11. Um, this has got about 200 miles on it, so it's about time to retire. But you can see the lugs on the bottom of this shoe are also pretty deep. Um, I don't think they're four millimeter, probably just shy of that. But um, this shoe did a good job of grabbing onto surfaces in those slick conditions or when I was dealing with mud. And so I liked this shoe, but overall, would I pay $42 for this shoe? You bet. But more importantly, would I pay $140 retail price for this shoe if I had to buy it knowing what I know today? Absolutely. The shoe would replace all of the other shoes in my rotation. I'd run in it all of the time. It was able to handle every condition that I exposed it to, and I'm excited to take it into the mountains in a couple of months.